had a 60% slope. Gentlemen, we're here to acquaint you, the contractors for the production of military vehicles, with the Army's methods and facilities of quality assurance testing. Now, these tests are conducted at various Army proving grounds where performance is measured against established military characteristics and specifications. Now, these parameters are set forth in Army Tank Automotive Command published quality assurance provisions. It's imperative that proving ground tests of automotive equipment are fully understood to be final proof that our quality assurance measures are effective. Colonel, as contractors building military vehicles, are we obligated by government approved quality assurance provisions or by passing tests at Army proving grounds? You're obligated by both. Quality assurance provisions are minimum standards developed to aid the manufacturer in building equipment that can reasonably be expected to stand up to proving ground tests, but are not conclusive in themselves. Tested performance is the ultimate target for acceptability. With this in mind, the following motion picture coverage of actual test operations should give some feel for the quality requirements that must be built into every vehicle the Army buys. Let's follow the main battle tank to Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland to watch performance evaluations as they are being conducted over test facilities designed to simulate almost any conceivable military tactical condition. Two hundred years B.C. Hannibal taught the military world the value of the vertical maneuver. Six feet in ten is the rate of climb demanded by today's army engineer and his 60% slope. From piston to track tread, every link of the drivetrain must prove the integrity of its design and manufacture. Using the same incline, braking too is an object for scrutiny, particularly the standing or holding brake. With engines cut to idling speed, inertia is maintained by the braking system alone for a prescribed period. This interval provides time to confirm normal engine functions under extreme tilt. Bridging the track-laying vehicle's ability to span ditch-like obstacles is an important objective of the tank designer. This test is demonstrative evidence that maximum bridging can be achieved. Since the introduction of the tank to warfare, the felled tree and the concrete abutment have been used effectively by a defender. Climbing over a 36-inch wall, the M60 has virtually eliminated the tree and made all but the highest walls little more than inconveniences. Traffic of men and machine invariably characterize battlefields as smothered with dust or deep with mud. Misery to men, dust and mud can be fatal to machines. Clogged and abraded, Engines of war halt an army, lose a war. Altering conditions, the test engineer determines the vehicle's capability to perform within the parameters of durability, reliability, and maintainability required by the combat soldier. Quality assurance testing is controlled testing. Inspection and service maintenance before each performance evaluation assures that only the planned, rigorous proving ground courses challenge vehicle acceptability. An empty grease gun and a loaded cannon can be equally destructive. Not only must today's battle tank perform with agility over relatively open terrain, it must retain its traditional role of the juggernaut. 750 horsepower engines throwing this mass of metal at heavy stands of trees demand extreme ruggedness for every component extending beyond the tank hull. 
mobility over or through natural and man-made obstacles still leaves a question of maneuverability. Mating of man and machine must be proved on the uphill, the downhill, mile upon mile of climbing, turning, braking over Aberdeen's hilly cross-country course. Fifty tons of hurtling armor is tamed to the touch of the exacting test driver when finally the Army engineer reports course testing complete and satisfactory. Partially submerged, the tank hull is examined for leaks after the grueling tests it has been subjected to. With seals apparently intact and tight during static submersion, the engineer still looks for flooding trouble by taking the vehicle through the tank at high speed. Engine breather system, exhaust and periscope must function after having been wave swept. While most battle and support vehicles are required to operate through surf launchings and fast stream crossings, some are fully amphibious. Every condition that may alter performance is challenged. Tests that are controlled, comprehensive, and exhaustive. Colonel, how closely are combat conditions simulated during these test operations? For instance, I haven't noticed any evidence of payloads. Usually, test directives require specific conditions, both with and without payloads. Where payloads are indicated, exact weighing is accomplished, usually with tied-down armor plate, which lends itself to exact positioning. You'll note that up to now, only track-laying vehicles have been shown on the varied test courses. Wheel vehicles are tested somewhat differently. What's the difference? Aren't they all subject to the same combat conditions? True, but the very fact that they are of basic different design indicates specialized functions and discriminating employment. The wheeled vehicles suggest speed, while the track represents slower but more rugged mobility. Actually, many test courses are used dually for both types of equipment. However, some testing must be tailored to the user's tactical demands, and the item's peculiarity of construction. Tires, for example, are a major added concern which calls for separate and distinctive evaluation. Here are tractor and semi-trailer being pounded over a roadway of a kind common in Europe. Small block and varying weather conditions combine to give this type of paving a name associated with poor highways, the Belgian block. Characteristic of the punishment to vehicles over Belgian blocks is a high-frequency vertical motion coupled with a roll that causes continual changes in directions of sheer strain. The 30% side slope shifts the weight of both cargo and tractor-trailer rig itself so that lateral load effects can be determined in terms of tracking, steering effort, stability, and ruggedness of vehicle generally under abnormally angular forces.
almost as important as competence over the worst terrain. A vehicle's behavior in emergency stops is a prime concern of the test engineer. Operations are not confined to engineering courses alone. Cross-country travel, too, is important in evaluations. Often, tactical maneuvers and road systems are incompatible. Now, this condition can be resolved only when incontestable evidence is established that quality assurance testing has foreseen and provided for every eventuality. Superior design and fabrication, the not apparent extras that the additional defense dollar has bought are demonstrated here for their true worth. Wooded growth, the quagmire, the hidden ditch, the loose shale hillside, the tire punishing razor sharp flint rock are enemies that were met and defeated on the drawing board, in the research laboratory, and on the production line. Special purpose vehicles, too, have established levels of performance to which they must measure up. Here, winching, so important to recovery and maintenance, receives a proving ground evaluation. Every increment of every type vehicle, support or combat, must meet the standard of the quality assurance test. Firepower, pinpoint destruction at the will of a field commander is nowhere better demonstrated than with the assured deployment and might of the M60 tank. This is the test, the test toward which all other tests were pointed. Every target impact was started at the base of a supporting wedge of vehicles, each dedicated to unfailing service of the battle tank at its apex. These tests at Army Proving Grounds wrap up cross-sections of all the battlefields of modern warfare. The Burma roads, the rough terrain of northern Korea, the drowned rice paddies and jungles of Southeast Asia. This quality assurance testing is the one positive determination for you and for us that our army moves when and where the demand is made.